Oh, hey everyone, just a couple little shorts. I just finished unloading the bus, and but, uh, I think it's obvious I'm gonna have to come out with a weed whipper. I haven't talked about this yet, but uh, I got a tick, and I got it up in a kind of a private place, if you know what I mean. I, I caught him, I mean, I, I went into the shower, I felt like a little bump that's okay, that's not supposed to be there, and uh, um, I found him, he's very tiny, Christ, uh, he wasn't any bigger than uh, half a grain, he was tiny, light brown in color, so hard to see against your skin. Anyways, I got him, I pulled him straight out with my fingers as best I could, I didn't break, you know, his blood sac, so anyways, I'm not going to take the chance. So far, I have not seen any of the rash, you know, the typical bullseye rash that comes up um, with that situation. But uh, I'm not chancing. I gotta call the doctors tomorrow and uh, see what they want me to do. Um, I can't give them the the tick because uh, I didn't think I was just like you little bastard and I smashed him. So he's dead and gone in the toilet. Well, toilet, but in the yeah, the toilet. So, but if you you can see you can see your cells. I mean that that is prime for you folks in the cities and stuff. This is prime tick territory. You've got long. Uh, grassy kind of plants they will stay on they will hang off of those and then when something like some kind of prey that they want to uh, latch onto, they will jump off there and necessarily bite right away they will crawl around like that's probably what he did I was wearing flip-flops out here with no sock that's probably what he did um, is that he you know probably went on to my foot and then you know uh, I laid down on the couch to watch some TV then I thought okay well I'll take a shower and that's when I discovered the bump finished cleaning up came out of the shower and like okay I got you you little prick so anyways uh, but uh, there hasn't been this area like in 50 or 60 years um, that's my first tick on me and I, I, I can't even remember it's probably more than 30 years um, like maybe when I was a kid because I remember my mom freaking out about that when we were kids but like that's a long time ago but like I've said before in stories uh, the cat the, the two cats that showed up here well were dropped off here by assholes um, and you know who you are if you ever see this um, and you lost out assholes I got two good cats out of it but Goldie's ears were just full of ticks like it took me I don't know like two hours picking and I had to be careful cats can't get Lyme disease so I wasn't too worried about that but there's other you know bacteria they can she could get infected anyways I took her into the vet and all that after that and got her shots and made sure she's got her spayed so I've already told all that story anyways but um, yeah <laughs> so I guess this will be the tick video <laughs> the story of the tick I was pretty up. I was pretty upset. Oh, it's a lot nicer in here. It's not that it's that warm out. What it is, is uh, it's humidity has come in, and uh, we've been told to expect a lot of humidity and heat this year in these parts. Like the long term, and I checked the American long term for the Midwest, which the Americans all uh, they they pretty much cover our area as well, and it doesn't look like it's going to be one of those summers I absolutely despise. So there's two choices in that matter, and when one of them is, hang on, I gotta turn that idiot news channel off. Um, what was I saying? Uh, oh yeah, the heat and humidity. So I got two good AC in here now with that new one at the uh, um, at, at the front. I'm probably gonna go. I found the, that model, and it's cheap. <laughs> I mean, what a great air conditioner for the price. I still can't get over that. Like, it's just, what a great air. It's the best one I've ever had here. And uh, the old one in the back, this one, I've had for probably going on 15 years. Anyway, it still kicks super cold and everything. There's really no reason to replace it. But if the new one that I've got goes on sale somewhere, right like that's a low I mean the trailer's nice if that goes on I'm gonna keep an eye on it keep an eye if it goes on sale like right now it would be it's starting to get hot so of course the price is up but when it's on sale I'm gonna go buy another one even if I just keep it in the box or I'll mount it in the back and then that one is pretty in pretty good shape if it continues that beat we'll clean it all up and then the next RV um, maybe we'll put one of those through somewhere uh, to have a proper air conditioner, probably around the bed or something in the back. So, because, you know, most of those have the... the
And although you don't do compressor in there that's only have like an hour's usage on it, and it was it was a big one they put in here. John, when I bought it from him in the trailer, and he said that he could literally keep beer cold in here. It was that much. Like that's what he wanted. He was like, when I'm up at my camp and I'm feeling miserable, I want it to be ice cold here. So, but anyways, it's not being used. We had to tear apart other parts to it, and then it was like, fuck it. Anyways, those aren't as good as just like if you're using shore power. Smaller ones like the 5000 BTU in an RV, uh, you know, you're you're going to, going to use it. See, if I don't go, like if I'm out at a campsite like I do at Sava Beach and I'm there for like the 10 days, now this year longer, I, I, yeah, I won't miss the air conditioning even with the heat and humidity. Because once I'm acclimated to it, I'm okay. And uh, But it's the in and out stuff. Um, and at night, at least in Sava Beach and most campgrounds you go to, it usually ends up being pretty cool. I do bring a fan. This happened at Sava Beach where it's been one of those 90 degree you know, humid nights, and you're like in the tent, you're going, oh my fuck, you know, and uh, whatever. So, but I, so I bring my van, and I've never suffered like it's always worked out good. Anyways, there we go. So, there's the tick story as well. I got rid of the tick, it's gone. Tomorrow morning, Monday, I'm gonna go talk. Uh, well, I'm gonna call the doctor's office, find out what they're gonna want me to do because of my diabetes. Uh, and all that kind of thing. My heart stopped from before. Uh, they may just turn around and put me on a two weeks of antibiotics or anything. I, I'm not one of these people that abuse antibiotics. Like, uh, I've had to take them for different things over the years, but I don't go running to the doctor every time because I didn't want to build up any resistance. But this might be a case where let's head, you know, close the gate before all the cows get out. So, because, uh, you know, I don't want a chance being the first Lyme disease case in how many years in these parts. So, and uh, I don't think physically, I don't know if I would survive it physically. I don't know. I mean, if you see some of the side effects on that, and I, I had a friend that had it and it wasn't, and he was a big strong lad when I first knew him. And he just, uh, it turned out bad. And neurological, you can inflame the heart, which is the last thing I want. So I'm thinking they may just say, okay, let's head this off. You know, uh, not wait the five days to see this, then we decide to put it. It's already been, it happened on Thursday, so uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, that's five days tomorrow, so they have to make a decision tomorrow, so I'm going to call them first thing. Okay, anyone, thanks for coming. As always, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, be good to your fellow human, and peace, long life, and live long and prosper, everyone out there. And always, always, thanks for coming, and don't forget to comment. I like that. I got the interaction is really good, at least for me. <laughs> See you after.